After I cover everything above the lake with rags to protect them, I'm going to start literally throwing globs of paint down in the foliage area below on the lower portion of the painting. And I use a bamboo brush for this because it has a nice loose bristle. I'll vary these colors as I go across. Now the consistency of the paint is important and it's very hard to describe what the correct consistency is. Um, for lack of a really good way to quantify this, I guess I'll say maybe the paint should be the consistency of thick cream. If you do the droplets too watery, they'll make these star formations on the paper and that's not good. And if I make the paint too thick, you get these really tiny little dots where all of the dots are little. So it's a thing you have to practice to kind of get it right, the right consistency. What I'll end up doing is spraying these dots with water to get a very interesting and effective effect for foliage. And of course, what I do is create little pools of paint in my palette before I even attempt this. They, they should be ready to go, the various colors that are going to be used. You should have the little pools of paint in the palette ready to go because if you try to get them mixed and to the right consistency, while you're doing this, uh, you're going to have these little globs of paint dry on you and uh, you don't want that. You, you really need to get these globs of paint down fairly quickly because, again, you don't want them to dry and set up. So I'm trying to move quickly here. I'm trying to get a variety of color. And I'm trying to not center the real bright colors. You know, like I don't want a lot of red, for instance, in the center. I'll probably use more yellow than any color because it'll mix with the blues and, of course, end up green, which will be the primary um, net color in the end. And yellow is a very common color, I think, in wildflowers and wild settings. Throwing the paint is, is sort of a wrist motion for me. Some people I've seen will tap the brush on something hard. Some people will hold the brush straight up and down and try to do the motion that way. I, I hold the brush kind of like a drumstick, I suppose, and it's really held somewhat horizontal to the paper surface. It's that quick wrist motion that throws the paint off. Again, this is a good thing to practice first. It's not as easy as it looks, but it's a good thing to learn. Now I'm going to pull the rags up a little bit before I spray these dots and I'll begin spraying. Now the goal of spraying is to not saturate. I just want to provide enough water to these drops of paint so that they fuse to another droplet that's near them. I want to leave a lot of dry paper. That would be the, the light areas, the white areas that are between the drops that are fused together. And that's going to give me this very interesting effect. So this is very difficult also. And I like to use a spray bottle that has a rather coarse pattern of spray. Um, you wouldn't want to use a perfume like mist. And often art stores sell those, I guess, for spray bottles. They, they have this fine mist and that, that wouldn't work well for this. I'm often using an old uh, Windex bottle, the index pump type. And I'll pick up some of the puddles that look like they're going to break with a what I'll call a thirsty brush, a dry brush. 
The paper I, I didn't mention is tilted forward and to the side, to the right. So the water that I've sprayed on there um, begins to build. Um, I'm gonna add salt on here too. That provides both texture and it provides a nucleus of sorts to kind of help hold the paint in place. And I'll lift my rag a little higher here too so I can see what I'm doing. And now uh, I'm gonna start doing my pull and smash trees. There's a lot to do here while the paint is wet. You can see I pull up and I smash in the boughs. This is done with a rigger. Pull up, smash in the boughs. Pull up, smash in the boughs. Another good thing to practice. It's not quite as easy as it looks, but it can be very effective. And I'll tend to just pull from the paint that is on the paper, wet and ready to use. And I'm jumping around from side to side. I don't want to work trees starting on one side and working across because everything is drying and you'll end up getting a little bit different effect with the trees as it dries. So I want this to be mixed across. If I start on one side and work across to the other, the trees on the left side may look quite different than the trees on the right side. So I'm jumping back and forth and I'm gonna vary the uh, value of the trees. And in some cases, I'm adding paint. You know, I'll just dip into my, in this case, uh, thalo green and add some darker trees. And I'm jumping around with these. Sometimes I'll dip into the uh, reservoirs of paint that are sitting on the uh, wet paper. And I'll go back to picking up some of the puddles. I call it puddle maintenance. And I'll pull some more trees. And I'm trying to break up also this upper line of the foliage so it's not a uniform V. Much of that has disappeared now because of the erratic treetop shapes. These trees are purposely crude. They're meant to be kind of wild looking. I don't want symmetrical Christmas trees. I want real wild looking trees and this technique lends itself well to that this pull and smash technique. And I want to make sure that I vary the bases of these pull and smash trees. I don't want them all originating at the very top edge of this uh, foliage area. So you can see some of the tree bases I'll drop down further into the uh, foliage area. While I'm in here, I'm going to lighten some of the areas in the lake, which uh, signify reflections of the snow above. I'll use a scrubber for that. I'm waiting for some of my foliage to dry a little bit, so I have time to do this. And now I'll go back to pulling and smashing some trees. I've added more salt, both for texture and stability, kind of stabilize these uh, puddles. You can run a blow dryer on 
these spots of paint, but that's uh, it's a little dangerous because you might dry it too quickly or you might actually blow the puddles across the paper, which wouldn't be good. So I like to let it dry naturally for the most part. As the paints dry, these pollen smash trees go in a little, uh, well, they have harder edges, which is a good thing because it appears, I think, to the viewer that they're closer if they're more defined. The original ones, since everything was so wet, blurred out more. But these that I'm putting on at this later stage are a little bit crisper, and I think that's a good thing. It gives the impression of depth. Once I have what I feel are enough trees, and once I feel that the puddles are fairly stable, then I will use a blow dryer to get everything completely dry that I've done. 